Don't You and Taiko Drums, because it's Game Exchange's one year anniversary. That's right, this month last year is when I first debuted the show. Admittedly though, it had a different name, but whatever, it's a time for celebration. And what better way to celebrate than talk about the one game that gets the most requests, Okami. And when I say it gets the most requests, I mean it. I've gotten more requests to culturally analyze this game than any others by a landslide. During my research, I discovered that there was just too much stuff to talk about, and none of it I wanted to leave out. So to celebrate, I'm doing a huge Okami marathon, as asked for by you, my loving audience. Now, first of all, I need to give credit where credit is due. Okamiwikia.com and Okamiworld.com have both covered much of the culture that I'm going to talk about, so I want to make it very clear that the information is out there. I'm just tacking on some other information that I found in my research. So then, where do we begin? Well, how about the title? Yeah, even the title itself has some interesting meaning behind it. The word Okami by itself can mean two things, one being wolf and the other being, quote, honorable god. Seeing as how we're playing as the greatest and most honored god in all Shintoism, who is incarnating a wolf, I think the title is spot on and somewhat witty. Now let's talk a bit about the main characters and concepts, particularly Amaterasu, Susano, Kushi, Orochi, and the great blade Tsukuyomi, starting with Amaterasu. Amaterasu is known in Shintoism as not only the goddess of the sun, but of the known universe. Her name derives from the phrase Amateru, meaning shining in the heavens. Her whole name, Amaterasu Omikami, means great august god who shines in the heavens. You probably notice in the game the various other gods that Amaterasu runs into gives her vast amounts of praise and act humbly towards her. Well, now you know why. She's the strongest, most powerful, most honored of the 8 million kami that reside in Japan. So that explains Amaterasu Okami quite well. Respected amongst the gods, close association with the sun, light, fire, and restoration, as well as having nearly complete control of the nature around her. So let's move on to the legendary Blade of the Moon, Tsukuyomi. In actual Shintoism, Tsukuyomi wasn't a sword, but actually one of the greater gods. Tsukuyomi no Mikoto was actually the brother and husband of Amaterasu, and please don't look too hard into that as well as being the god of the moon. His name comes from Tsuki, meaning moon or month, and Yomi, which possibly refers to the underworld or reading, and I'm honestly not sure which is correct, but I do think it's referring to underworld considering the following. The two were in unison, bringing constant light into Japan, but one day Amaterasu discovered that Tsukuyomi had slain the goddess of food, Ugemochi, who was, when she found him, withdrawing food from Ugemochi's various orifices. Apparently, Ukimochi could regurgitate or expel food that was very, very exquisite, but the manner in which she did it caused Tsukuyomi to become disgusted with her to the point where he killed her. Horrified, Amaterasu labeled Tsukuyomi an evil god, and day and night had officially become separated. So again, the connection here is rather obvious. In the game, Nagi's sword was blessed by the moon, and in this case it may have been the god of the moon himself who blessed the blade, and through that transformation, it took on the strength of Tsukuyomi himself, which then could slay and banish the great demon Orochi. The negative presentation of the Moon Cave may also have derived from the actions of the real Tsukuyomi that labeled him evil, but that's just speculation though. And that brings us to our lead villain of the game, Orochi, an eight-headed serpent demon who chooses different maidens to be sacrificed to him. Orochi's full name is Yamata no Orochi, and even in the game he is named as such when you first encounter him. The breakdown of his name has several meanings and have been debated for some time now. His name could mean Great Snake, Peat God, or Tailed God, and so on. It all depends on how you interpret the names into its various kanji. Like the Orochi of the game, Yamata no Orochi was a demon god of eight heads and eight tails, though there was no record of the legends of Orochi possessing elemental abilities. There's also a lot of speculation that Orochi was actually inspired from the tale of the Trial of Hercules when he slayed the Hydra, or the other way around. I also like to think that King Ghidorah himself was born from the concept of Orochi, but that's just wishful thinking on my part. The other thing to keep in mind too is that this isn't the only time we've ever seen Yamata no Orochi in video games. Any fans of Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors knows what I'm talking about. The Orochi Warriors games, and they would be spot on. The eight-headed beast that can only be defeated by recruiting people through the space-time continuum is the same Orochi. Amazing how that all works, huh? Here's the really cool thing about Orochi and Okami in general. It was based off an actual legend in Japan. First of all, Susano in Shintoism is the third sibling alongside Amaterasu and Tsukuyomi, but he was banished to the earth by his sister Amaterasu after tricking her. Thus, he roamed the land. One day he came upon two lesser earthbound kami who were weeping at the head of the He River in the Izumo province. 
He learned that Orochi would come once a year and devour one of their eight children, the next one being Kushinada Hime. Susano told the spirits that in return for her hand, he would save her. Susano then ordered the spirits to prepare special sake that was brewed in eight vats that was housed by eight gates and eight fences. Orochi then came and each head drank said sake from each vat and fell asleep. Sounds really familiar, doesn't it? It was at this time Susano severed each of Orochi's heads and then buried them in a pile. And within the serpent's tail, he found the beautiful sword Murakumo, which he presented to Amaterasu who accepted the token of peace, and the sword itself became one of the three imperial regalia. The other two being a mirror and a necklace, given to Amaterasu from her parents, Izanami and Izanagi. Wait, you mean Nami and Nagi are also gods? Yes, and here's their story. Izanami and Izanagi were the technical son and daughter of the very first kami, Kuni Tokotachi and Ame no Mi Nakunushi, who were charged by their parents to mold and create the world we know now. After they were wed, they bore the eight great islands of ancient Japan as well as numerous kami. Izanami had passed away in time though, but Izanagi took it upon himself to travel to Yomi, or the underworld, to rescue the soul of his beloved. But unlike the game, he was unsuccessful. In fact, for Izanami, all of that time she spent in Yomi transformed her into an evil creature, and some speculate even the goddess of the underworld. During his purification to rid himself of the evils of Yomi, he created the three sibling gods upon washing his left eye, right eye, and nose. While the Okami Nagi fought Orochi to save Nami instead of fighting through hell itself to save her, the imagery is still present. So there you have it. Okami, in a backhanded sort of way, tells two actual legendary tales of men fighting to save the women they love from great evils. And perhaps that's why this game's narrative is so good. It's based off of a real legend. Tune in next time, and I'll talk about the minor characters and concepts from Okami that also had cultural and legendary influence. But until then, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out. Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here, and I wanted to give a great big personal thank you to all of my viewers and all of my fans that have stuck with me over this last year. I've got a lot of thanks to give out as well to Sean, Drake, Ryan, and the G1 community over at ScrewAttack.com. You guys are where I got started. A big thank you to Mushroom Tomatoes, ReviewTopia, and ThePunkEffect.com for housing my content. Thank you so much to Dan of the Extra Credits team for the great advice, Brittle Floss for being a constant inspiration, and my fellow game theorists Matt, Pat, and Ronnie. You guys are some of the coolest dudes I've ever met. Uh, as always, you can find me on Twitter and Facebook and the Gaijin Goomba fan club at DeviantArt.com. And if you like my content, please, please check out Ronnie and Matt Pat's as well. Digressing and side questing and game theory. It's really cool stuff. You'll learn a lot and you'll have a lot of fun. But until next time, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.